let's first of all redirect the user to a page that we're going to build and then we'll start to build out that page we'll create the template for this and we'll go ahead pull the data from the database and create that html5 video player so under the success callback all we want to do is say window.location and in here this will just forward the user off to a particular location now in our case it will be the full path to the url and then we can just say video and then here we want some kind of video hash. Now we know that when we send a request off to our backend, we get back that hash. And this data here will represent the data that we get back from sending this Ajax request. So all we need to do is append on data.hash, simple as that. So let's just test this out and then we'll go ahead and build the page that we get forwarded to. Obviously that won't exist at the moment. So let's just quickly upload a video here. And you can see we're redirected off to public, video, and then the hash just after here. Like I said, it's not found, but we can now focus on building this page and pulling everything together. So let's start out with the template. So over in our views, we want to create a new file, and this is just going to be called something like video.twig. And we can basically just copy over the home template here because it's going to have pretty much the same structure. So inside of here, we are going to have the video player. So at the moment, it's not doing anything. We need to build the root for it. So down here, let's say app get, and this time it's going to be video, and then it's going to be the hash. So let's create our closure just here again with our request, our response, and our arguments. So why don't we just return this view now just so we can see that the view is at least working. So let's go ahead and render that with the response. And remember it's video.twig. And we now see this, perfect. So all that we've got left to do now is take this hash from the arguments in here, look it up in the database, send the data through to the view and then we can output the source because we have the source stored in our database. So up here then, let's just do a prepared statement or create a prepared statement to pull this out. And of course, we're using prepared statements to protect against SQL injection. So all we really want is the source. So I'm going to say select source from the videos table where the hash equals, and then we have our hash placeholder. So here we're going to say video execute and in here we want to pass in that hash that we get back so it's from args and it's just called hash okay so now we can send this through to our view we can do some checking here if you want maybe render a 404 page but what we're going to be doing is kind of handling this a little bit more gracefully and here we're going to put a message if it can't be found so for the third argument of our render method on our view dependency we want to pass in data we want to send through to this view. In this case, it's video. We want to fetch the result and we're fetching this as an object. So we use PDO's fetch object like so. So now we're technically pulling this from the database. We have that record, it's being passed through. If I change this slightly, maybe I'd add an A at the end, it still works, but we can handle that within the view. Okay, so over in our video view then, what do we want to do? We want a very simple if statement to check if that video exists, first of all. PDO will have returned a false if it couldn't be found. So here we can just use an if statement on video like that. And then otherwise, we want to show a message. So let's just end that if there. And in here, let's say we couldn't find that video. So in our case, this works. If I had an A on the end, we couldn't find that video. So pretty straightforward. We have a valid video hash, and we want to look at outputting this in a simple video player. So let's create an HTML5 video element. All we want to do is pull the source property from that video that we got back from our database. We want some controls on there. And we also want to give this a class of video player as well. 
So these came with the course download, but if we just had take a look, you can see that all we're doing is setting a width of 100% just so it sits nicely within that container. So now we can see that we have this video, perfect. So all that's left to do now is kind of fit this all together by going over to our homepage and uploading a new video. So let's go and do this, pull this over, hit submit. Once that's uploaded, will be forwarded through to that page with the right hash and we see our newly uploaded video that we can not only play but go ahead and share with other people as well. So what would once be a really complicated process has been made really easily mainly because of the clip champ button. We've sent it off to S3 so it's in a really nice storage area, really really straightforward and then all we do is store that kind of metadata in our database and we can go ahead and create a very simple video sharing website in not much time at all.